Welcome in everybody to another episode for 10.6. This time we'll be talking about item changes coming in the 10.6 season of Souls update and there are many of them. We're going to try to shorten this down as much as possible by condensing our material here. But we do need to talk about the new items that are coming to Smite via glyphs. Uh, our first one is going to be a glyph to Relic Dagger. Already a fun item to build, but when you add these glyphs, going to make them pretty good and probably seen quite a bit in your games. The first one we're going to see is Bewitched Dagger, which is going to have, you know, your current relics already have 40 second cooldown reduction because of Relic Dagger. Its passive will be all enemy gods have 25% reduced attack speed in a 55 unit radius around you, aka Witchblade. And then you have Eldritch Dagger, and this will give you, whenever you activate a relic, your protections are increased by 15% and you gain the ability to see wards. I don't know for 10 seconds. I don't know if anybody really cares about the ability to see wards as much as they care about these extra 15% protections. I think solos and supports are going to love these two items. But what's crazy is we're getting two more uh, actually really, really good glyphs here in Rune Forge Hammer. Rune Forge Hammer, basically whenever you do a hard CC on enemy god, a runic symbol appears on the ground last lasts 5 seconds. Enemies in the symbol take 10% more damage, and this can only occur every 15 seconds. So then you have Flame Forge Hammer. The glyph will additionally, enemy gods within the rune are burned, dealing 5 plus 10% of your protections from items and abilities as magical damage every 1 second while inside the rune and for 3 seconds after leaving it. So, a way for tanks to do damage while still building prots. Then you have Rune Breaking Hammer, which I've seen both of these in PTS, and they were both sick. Uh, your next successful hard CC on Enemy God creates a 30-unit shockwave around them. Enemies hit by the shockwave deal 10% less damage and take 10% more damage for 3 seconds. This can only occur once every 15 seconds. In the game I played last night, uh, I saw an Achilles build Rune Breaking Hammer and absolutely demolish people and then i saw a gilgamesh with flame forge hammer doing work as well so definitely keep an eye out for these two items i think they're very very good i also think these two items in bewitched and eldritch dagger are going to be very very good as well i think the problem is you have to decide which glyph item you want as a tank and these four all have viability to some respect of why you'd really really want to build them but oh wait there's two more and the next two are for pridwin uh, basically, you have Glorious Pridwin. This is going to basically give you two procs of Pridwin. When your ultimate ability has finished casting, you create an explosion, dealing 75% of your protections from items and abilities as magical damage, and slowing targets by 25% for 3 seconds in a 30-unit radius. Then you gain a shield equal to 90% of your protections from items and abilities in, for 5 seconds. When destroyed by timing out or being depleted, you explode again. Uh, this can only occur every 45 seconds. Insanity. Like, I think we're going to see a lot of Pridwin. I think it's just kind of cool what it does. But then you look at Reverent Pridwin, and I think this is like the four fun glyph of the ones that they're adding. I don't think we'll see Rever uh, Reverent as much, but this allows you that after you cast your ability, you gain a 200% of your protection shield for five seconds. And then when it's destroyed or timed out, it does a explosion for 30 units. Uh, for magical damage equal to 75% of your prots from items and abilities and slows target by 25%, 25 seconds. I think 200% shield is absolutely wild. So keep an eye out for that. I think these are really, really cool tank items. And I, I it makes me kind of want to play some more tanks. I've been getting stuck in the solo lane lately and I don't really like being over there, but maybe with these items, it makes it a little bit more enticing to, for me to play solo from time to time. As a support, I'm super happy about Relic Dagger. I can tell you that right now. These Pridwin changes are really, really good too. So what's going on with items? We have a game-wide stat squish a rune. So I'm going to scroll through items, but I am not going to spend a lot of time talking about every item that got changed because there are a metric ton of them. But the idea is here, all tier three items receive the following changes. 30% deduction in physical and magical power, 15% deduction of health, physical prots, and magical cross, magical prots across the board. Uh, they rounded to increments of five, so no weird numbers. And they decreased the item passives for 
that provide power, health, and protections by a similar amount as the item's base stats. The only two items that went unchanged in this patch were Odysseus Bow and Toxic Blade. I'm going to take a minute here. I am thoroughly convinced that Odysseus Bow is going to get a glyph that will be Toxic Blade in the future. So mark my words on that. Um, just a feeling. I talked about it on the Bot G podcast last week. I really, I, I feel pretty strongly about that, but that I digress. That's a conversation for another time. The goals are to change the field power curve, especially in the mid to late game, make power and proc caps harder to reach and more meaningful to reach, decrease burstiness of DPS versus DPS combat, and empower tanks and tanky builds by nerfing HP and protection less than power. And I think it's going to do that. I think just from playing PTS last night, the game felt in a healthier state. It felt a little bit more fun despite some of the matchups I was in. I did have a better time. So I'm, I'm kind of excited for Tuesday uh, and see how this all goes. Now, the following items were nerfed, and you can see why I'm not going to talk about each of these, because it goes Arendite, Aussie, Atalantis Bow. Atalantis Bow didn't need a nerf. The item's already bad. Uh, Bancroft's Talon. Bancroft's Claw, Berserker's Shield, Blade of Boomerang, Blood Forge, Book of Toth. You could see where I'm going here. So I'm just going to scroll past this. I will uh, mention a couple dev notes on items like Breastplate of Regrowth because it's been doing such a good job in comp and we've seen it used so often. It received a bit of a bigger nerf than the other items uh, just because of how prevalent it's been in the meta. And then if you scroll through, you're going to see the same thing for Kins and Soul Reaver where the passive is not going to proc as hard on squishier gods. Heartward Amulet, part of the aura shifts as outlined previously. And we're going to go through and we're going to move basically to the shifted items. I think Prophetic Cloak, yeah, it had an aura shift as well. So nothing too crazy there. But we are going to move to the shifted items. And the shifted items start with, I believe, Absolution. Because we had starter up upgrades uh, get tweaked as well with their power and all that fun stuff. All right. So our shifted items, the ones that we actually care about, actual changes that weren't just like, hey, we're nerfing it to ner for the 30% or the 15% for prots and health or power. Absolution is one of these shifted items. And these items that aren't performing as well right now, and they want to get buffs along with their 30% and 50% stat reduction. So these include some tank items, some mage ADC items, and DPS class glyphs. Absolution, we're going to get the decreases. But and then it gets the increased, the passive CC immunity, from 0.6 seconds to one second and added a 10% mana heal on hit of the passive. Um, and then you have Abyssal Stone. Obviously, they had the decreases across the board, but they decreased the internal cooldown from six seconds to five seconds, and they increased the debuff duration from four seconds to five seconds. So pretty good buff there on Abyssal Stone. Amulet of Silence, they uh, decreased the number of stacks required to trigger this item from five to four, and they decreased the internal cooldown from 30 seconds to 15 seconds. It's going to be feeling pretty nice. Archdruid's Fury, an item that really has fallen off. We saw it built a good bit earlier in the season, and then it just really just took a dive. They decreased uh, the cost by 100 gold, and they decreased the in cool internal cooldown by 5 seconds, so it's 10 seconds now. Cyclopean Ring uh, increased the percent max health damage from 7% to 8% on the item's passive. Dawnbringer, they increased the passive proje uh, protections and movement speed from 5 to 10%. That's a pretty hefty buff. And it now caps at three enemy gods in the area. So I think you might be seeing some more Dawnbringers in your game. Frostbound Hammer, they increased the HP 5 from 20 to 25. And they decreased the internal cooldown from 10 seconds to 8 seconds. Gem of Isolation, they decreased the cost in gold by 150. And they decreased the internal cooldown by... Uh, two seconds from 10 to 8. Hasten Ring, they decreased the cost by 100 gold. Jotun's Cunning, they decreased the CDR applied to the next ability from 25% to 20%. And Jotun's Vigor, they increased the duration from 5 seconds to 8 seconds, which is going to be huge. They also increased the HP threshold to trigger this uh, to 50% of your health instead of 40%. So some pretty nice shifts there. Mana Core Spikes, which you really haven't seen. I, I don't even know the last time we saw Mana Core Spikes. Uh, they decreased the cost by 100 gold, and they increased the passive damage from 3% to 4%. Midgardian Mail, they increased the passive duration from 2 seconds to 3 seconds, and they increased the max stacks from 3 to 4. There is a lot of good anti-attack speed items in the, in the game now. Uh, I think Midgardian Mail getting changed. You have the um, Bewitched Dagger. And then you have her, the way Horrific's performing with those items. I think we're going to see a very heavy anti-attack speed kind of build coming out of supports. 
So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Stone of Gaia, they increased the passive knockup counter heal from 5% to 7%, and they increased the passive heal effect from 0.35% to 0.4% per second. Uh, nice to see that change, because I think there's a lot of good knockups in the game right now, and Stone of Gaia is kind of really the only anti knockup item, if you want to call it that. So something to, to keep an eye on. Talisman of Energy gets increased move speed and attack speed per stack from 2% to 3%, and they increased the MP5 from 10 to 15. That's an item I already like in Assault. And that makes me want to buy it a little bit more. Uh, Telekines increase the basic attack damage bonus from 10 plus 2 per level to 10 plus 3 per level. And then Ethereal Staff, they increase the passive health steal from 6% to 8%. I don't even know last time I saw E Staff, so I'm kind of glad to see that item get a little bit of a, little bit of a look. Uh, some dependent items. These items rely specific power, health, protection thresholds and are being adjusted along with percent reduction stats. So, for instance, like Nimble Bancroft, they decrease the amount of power needed for each stack from 40 to 30. Heartseeker, they decrease the passive uh, physical power requirement from 200 to 150 and 350 to 300. Uh, the mass got adjusted down for their auras. Also, Ratatasker items did get nerfed. I know that's always the one that everybody asks about off the bat. Like, oh, well, there's a there's a power change. Did, did Ratatasker's items get changed? Yes, yes, they did. No need to worry there. Um, some additional item balance uh, strictly to starter items. They decreased the cost of bluestone to 650 gold. Uh, Boomba's dagger did get increased physical and magical power and it increased HP regain from killing a jungle monster from 8 to 10%. War flag got increased HP regain per assist from 4 to 8. Wing shard got decreased movement speed from 15 to 10. Bracer of Radiance got decreased movement speed from 15 to 10, and then the duration from 8 seconds to 6 seconds on the decrease. Same thing with its um, upgraded counterparts. And then, um, funny story, you know, we talked about, I don't know, what, a patch ago, two patches ago, really two patches ago, in 10.5, them doing a percent change on its cap and making it like 32%. Well, they said, hey, by the way, we're reverting that back to what it was. So everything's back to 40% and everything's going from back to its 16 to 20%, 8 to 10%, 4 to 5%, that kind of stuff. So everything that got changed in the percent pin changes a patch ago, or I guess, sorry, in 10.5 has been completely reverted back to what it was. So you can go back to thinking of everything as you did before. Yippee Kaye item changes. Hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know if you think some other items should have gotten maybe some shifts along with the ones that did. Do you feel good about these changes? Do you think this power, you know, decrease this power crunch is going to be better for the game? Do you think it's going to be too tanky of a meta? What kind of other adjustments do you think you want to see? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to check out Battlegrounds of the Gods, a Smite podcast and my podcast, Up Your Experience podcast. You guys take it easy and keep an eye out for episode three about God Changes.